Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a Manta Easy review. So this is the Manta E3 Easy board. I like to thank Big Tree Tech for supplying this to me for review. Um, it came in handy here on my Rook Evolution build. It's a nice compact little board. It is targeted towards Ender 3, a, basically a direct replacement for the Ender 3. It does have the same bolt pattern as an Ender or Creality board, which is really convenient. This is probably one of the better ways to get Clipper on your Ender if you don't have a Raspberry Pi already or a desktop or laptop or anything like that and you want to upgrade your printer. This is an awesome all-in-one solution and one of my favorite ways to get Clipper onto a smaller machine or an Ender machine. I really like the form factor and this, like I say, this is the easy version of it, which means it uses the Big Tree Tech Easy drivers. Um, these are actually really, really cool. I, I didn't think I was gonna like these. Um, it's a little bit funny because the name of these drivers is, um, they're, they're called Easy drivers because they're meant to basically slot in here only one way so that you can't put them in backwards and fry your, your board or your driver. However, the funny part is these are actually quite difficult to install. They do only go in one way, but you definitely have to apply uh, quite a bit of force. Um, I didn't actually find these easy to install as far as push in, um, but they are directional. They have a little notch here on the one side, so you can only plug them in one way. What I actually ended up really liking about these drivers is the heat sink. This has to be probably the best solution for a heat sink on a stepper driver. There's no um, like double-sided stickers or anything like that. It's actually screwed into the driver itself. There is some uh, thermal paste applied to it and these aren't gonna fall off. I really, really like that and I really like the orientation. I think if you were gonna put a cooling fan on this, the orientation of this is really nice to cool these drivers down if that's what you're wanting to do. So my favorite part about these easy drivers is definitely the actual heat sink. So that's really cool. Um, the form factor is great. Uh, like I say, you do have to just make sure you apply a good amount of force to actually put them into the board there. I of course am running a CB1. We can see the CB1 heat sink here and the CB1 is underneath that. This will take a Raspberry Pi CM4 as well. The CB1 is very inexpensive though. I definitely recommend it. I really do like Big Tree Tech's uh, image or package for this board. So essentially you can just go to the Manta Easy manual and you can download their CB1 image, which is ready to go. It has Clipper on it, it has Mainsail on it, it has Moonraker, it's all ready to go. All you have to do is make your config file and you're done. You can start using Clipper. Very, very easy way to get Clipper on a machine. Again, it's directed to Ender 3 or Ender style printers. However, this is an awesome option for any small form factor machine that only needs five drivers to get going with Clipper. And you can avoid all the extra wiring and USB cable going to some other Raspberry Pi or something like that. Really, really nice clean setup. You can see here I have my Wi-Fi antenna right here. It has your all the common uh, ports you would think it's got RGB which I am using on this build it has five stepper outputs like I said it has a dual Z too so you can run two Z off of one stepper motor which is really nice we have a SD card slot here for the CB1 and then up here is the SD card slot for the actual Manta board we only need that one time to flash clipper or anytime you're going to flash clipper you can use that and then we leave the OS SD card in there. This is HDMI out. That's for the actual CB1 or CM4 if you're gonna be using that. There are replaceable fuses, which is really nice. We have our terminals here for our hot end, power in, that type of thing. This does have two extruder outputs, which is really nice. So you could actually run two extruders from this board. 
that's a, a nice feature definitely if you're going to be wanting to run um, two extruders on an ender or like I say a small form factor printer that's really neat um, it has CAN bus here we have the GPIO outputs here as well for the actual CB1 which is really nice again really really great uh, form factor for this board there's also some U some actual full size USB here which is really great for input shaper I run the Phi the FiTech uh, ADXL board which is just a USB C uh, board so you can actually run USB directly into this which is really awesome so I do like that um, and yeah this has been working great on my Rook Evolution like I say I wanted to um, basically just use this in a printer instead of just having it on the, the table and talking about it it is definitely targeted to to the ender printers like I said before but I think anyone should really uh, consider this for a small form factor printer so um that's kind of going to wrap up my review. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about it in a good way. This is basically Big Tree Tech made it easy for you. It, it's a great board. This is um, the third time I've been using a Big Tree Tech Manta. All of them have worked great. Um, the Wi Fi is working great on these now. They did fix the CB1 Wi Fi. Just do note it only supports 2.4 gigahertz, not 5. So make sure you're joining a 2.4 compatible network. And you'd be totally fine with that. They do actively update the CB1 image as well, which is very nice. So generally what I will do is I'll download the CB1 image directly from Big Tree Tech and I won't touch it. I generally don't do any updates or anything like that afterwards. I grab the image that they have and I just use it as is. After maybe a couple months or whatever, if I notice there's a new image, I'll go ahead and grab that. They do have their own kind of fork of big or fork of clipper and that type of stuff so i want to make sure that i use big tree tech's version um and i generally don't find updating clipper uh, often gives you anything extra for the most part usually what happens is they'll update something weird like permissions or something like that and you'll end up breaking your install so i always just go to the source go to big tree tech's github and i grab the cb1 image i'll link all that information below for you as well so as a treat for uh, everyone who stayed to the end of this video, let's uh, show off the Rook Evolution a little bit and talk about it for just a couple seconds or a couple minutes. And uh, I can kind of give a little bit of a teaser. All right, everyone. So here's a quick look at the Rook Evolution for everyone who stayed to the end. So this is the new printer that I have been working on for a very long time. Uh, this is um, a couple hundred hours of CAD that you're seeing here. <laughs> um, I'm going to be very transparent in saying that uh, this is only coming to Patreon as uh, for the files. So you will need to join my Rook Evolution tier on Patreon if you do want the zip files. They're not on there yet. So if you're going to join the Patreon right now, of course, I do appreciate the support. All you're going to get right now is teasers and you're going to get access to a private channel on my Discord with other Patreon members that have access to the Rook Evolution tier. So you're going to get to see build progress, how the beta testers printers are going, um, that kind of thing, you know, updates. Uh, I, I generally post on there quite often about screenshots and how the CAD is going and what I'm changing and that type of thing. So what you're actually seeing here is a iteration one of this printer. So this is actually a old version of it. I'm actually reprinting a new one from the ground up. All the parts have been changed. Uh, again, I'm putting a lot of effort into this printer and that is why I'm generally going to only make this available on Patreon. I am going to have other printers for free definitely um, but the amount of work that has gone to this printer I thought that it was um, okay for me to actually charge again ten dollars you do not have to subscribe to the patreon for a certain amount of time I'm totally fine with uh, people joining the patreon grabbing the files and canceling and just paying for the one month the one ten dollar month that's totally fine again the files are not out yet 
once uh, I will be doing a full YouTube video on this printer once it's finalized and I'm really happy with it and all the beta testers changes have been incorporated. Um, but we can see here, uh, really cool looking printer. It has 3D printed side panels that are in four sections here. Um, it has a really cool look to it. Really nice form factor. I like the proportions of this printer. I have made some changes to the size just a little bit. Um, what you're looking at here basically is going to be a 150 by 150 build area and around 160 to 170 on the Z height. So it's quite a usable size, really, really cool printer. And it's gonna have uh, 40 tens for the cooling. Um, I will be posting, like once I release this uh, bill of materials and stuff like that, there is a bill of materials on my um, private Discord channel, like, like I say, the Patreon one. But again, if you are just waiting for the files, wait till the YouTube, full YouTube release of this printer does happen and you can join the Patreon, grab the files. Um, the zip file is basically going to contain a full build guide on this, a print guide. Um, there's going to be a lot of things contained in the zip file to make sure it's very, very uh, easy to build and, and to actually print. So I'll give a quick shot here of the top. Definitely all new belt routing and stuff there. So um, it's going to be a really neat printer. If you're definitely interested in checking out the progress of this printer and you're just happy to support the channel and support the actual work that is going into this definitely feel free to join the patreon um, but like i say you do not have to you can wait till the the zip file releases and like i say i will do a youtube announcement for the actual printer when it's out so again thanks everyone feel free to comment below and uh, i'll catch you again next time